All right, guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about Hooke's Law, the relationship and variables in Hooke's Law, how to solve for the spring constant, little k, to show the relationship graphically of the restoring force and x, and just a basic Hooke's Law uh, kind of lab solution sheet. All right, so first, let's talk about what Hooke's Law is. If I have a ceiling and I hang a spring from that ceiling, and there is no force being applied to it other than gravity, that spring is going to sit here in its natural position, all right? So this is the natural position of the spring and where it will stay always. And this will be the same no matter what until I add a mass to that or some force that's going to stretch that spring. So if I show the same spring again, and now I've added some mass to that spring, what that mass is going to do is apply a weight, Fg, downward on the spring, causing it to stretch out, all right? Now, the spring always wants to stay or be back in its natural position. So as gravity is pulling this mass down, there is another force from the spring that is making that spring want to go back to its natural position, all right? And that force we call F of S, or the restoring force. And if these two, if this mass is not moving up or down, then we can say that the restoring force in this equilibrium situation is equal to F of G. So if you know this mass, Mg, you are now going to be able to find the first way to solve for this restoring force. All right? So the first piece of information that we're going to need in Hooke's Law is this F of S, the force that a spring pulls back on a mass to return to its natural position. The next variable that's going to be very, very important to us is how far this string stretched. So if I look at this natural position right here, okay, and then I say from here it stretched this distance to here, I will have that difference, and that difference I call x, all right? And x is equal to the distance stretched or compressed. So in this example, I have stretched this total distance. Now, don't be confused by this total length here, okay? We don't want to look at the length from the ceiling. Not to be confused with this, all right? This is not x. All right, so we're looking at just the difference from the p initial position to the final position. That's how we're going to solve for x, all right? And this is going to be called the distance stretched or, in some cases, compressed or made smaller. In a compressed situation, I might have a spring that's on the ground, and maybe it's up and bubbly like this. And then I sit a mass on top of that spring. What it's going to do is make that mass compress and get smaller. Then we'd measure x from its initial position here to its final position here. That was why we will solve for x in that position. So that's the distance compressed, and that's in meters. So now we have this situation where we had this spring, then I hung a mass from it, and the spring is not moving. So if I know M, I could solve for FG. I also know F of S because that's going to be equal to FG because the system is in equilibrium and it's not moving. It's not oscillating back and forth. This is not moving. And then I'm going to have this distance X. So when we look at the relationship for Hooke's Law, or how a force makes a string stretch or compress, we say that the restoring force is going to be equal to the distance stretched or compressed, but there's going to be one more constant variable, k. Okay, This relationship right here, which is on your reference table or whatever you guys use, this is called Hooke's Law. And it is the relationship between how much a spring wants to go back to its normal position and how much it's stretched by this k. k is called the spring constant.
And what this really represents is how difficult or how easy it is to stretch or compress the spring. Is the spring stiff or is it very, very loose or easy to stretch? So this is the ease to stretch or compress. And you might see this called like stiffness of the spring. So this value here is either going to be given or you could solve if you know these particular cases. Let me give you an example. A, a spring is stretched two meters when a five kilogram mass is hung from it. What is K? So I'd set up my picture. I would see that this was before. Now I've stretched it all the way down here. There's a five kilogram mass on it. I have FG and I also have FS and it is stretched a distance X of two meters. So I say F of S equals KX. F of S is really going to be equal to MG equals KX. So we have five times 9.8 divided by 2, and that will be the K. And the unit for K we see is going to be newtons divided by meters from this example here. So these are the units for K. Now when we do a lab, when you do a Hooke's Law lab, you are pretty much going to be taking data, and you are going to say that if I have a bunch of masses, M1, M2, M3, etc., I could then solve for a bunch of FS's, FS1, FS2, and FS3. That's going to make this spring stretch, X1, X2, and X3. And if I graph this relationship of FS in newtons by X in meters, I'll have some data points here. I do my line of best fit. This line of best fit here is going to be equal to, oh, I'm sorry, is going to be equal to slope equals delta y over delta x. So therefore, f of s over x. So we know that our slope is now going to be k. So when you're doing a Hooke's Law lab, you can solve for k by graphing f of s versus x. All right. I hope that explains a little bit on Hooke's Law. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.